is it possible to make a game without using variables? And look, I know that, you know, every like scripting tutorial, like the very first thing that they teach you is like, oh yeah, here's how you make a variable. But my goal of this video is to just try and make a game without using variables, right? Now you might be saying, okay, what's the purpose of this, right? Is this just for entertainment? And I mean, somewhat, it would be fun because it would be kind of like a challenge, you know? I mean, I'm literally challenging myself to do this, right? But I feel like this will just like show me and you as well just how important the variables actually are, right? And I know this is like just Roblox, but I don't know. I feel like this will apply to like any coding language as well. So let me quickly outline the challenge, okay? The challenge is that I want to make a basic simulator game where you have a part and then you can click on the part and earn money. That's the very basic thing I want to do. The second rule is that I'm only allowed one script inside of server script service. And obviously the third rule is no variables. So let's begin with actually coding the parts. Okay, this one is actually fairly simple. So to actually detect when a part has been clicked on, the Roblox has this amazing item called a click detector, which by the way, if you go to my oldest videos, that is the first video of mine that actually did really well. So that video actually is what got me started uploading, which is pretty cool to think about. Now what we want to do is we want to detect whenever this part has been clicked. Okay, so we need to get the click detector that's inside of the parts, right? And the part is inside of the workspace, right? So we can say workspace dot part, right? Like so, not parrot part, <laughs> click detector. And then we'll just say mouse click like so. And we'll connect it to a function which will give us the player who clicked. Now, the issue here is that this is technically a variable, okay? Because I can name this whatever I want and it holds a certain value. It's a word that holds a value making it a variable, right? However, this gets an exception as technically by definition, Roblox calls it a parameter and not a variable. And also because the only other way for us to like circumvent this is to not make a new function, it's to make another function and then connect it here, which technically won't make us use the variable. But the issue here is that in order to use a function that we, you know, define earlier, we have to turn it into a variable, right? We have to make a variable equal to that function. So I'll, again, that's against the rules. So now the very next thing is we want to give the player who we have right here some cash. And this is where it gets a little tricky, okay? So whenever the player joins the game, what I want to do is I want to give the player an actual cash value, right? Do you know how like in Roblox games, they have these like, you know, like uh, leaderboards where you can see the player's name in, it says like cash or like tokens or I don't know, whatever dumb currency games use. And then it says like a value, like, okay, this guy has 100 tokens. This guy has zero tokens. This guy has like one plus E, B, whatever. But basically the way that people actually add values to these, you know, leaderboards is basically whenever a player joins the game, we want to put a folder inside of them. Okay. Like, like this, a folder and that folder has to be named in all lowercase leader stats like so and then if you want to add a value inside of this folder you can just put like an int value but the issue here is that we can't really do this in the game we have to do this in an actual script okay so we can say game dot players player added so whenever a new player joins the game we'll connect that to a function which will give us the player who joined the game and just by the way in case you're wondering why there's like two players here so you know why we have two you know parameters that are the same name it's because this player is only accessible inside of this function right if i try to get the player anywhere else it wouldn't work right so it doesn't recognize the player outside of this function so these two players are reserved to their own function which is why we can have them name the same thing okay and so what i'm about to do please never do this okay usually what you could do is you could just say you know local folder and you could just make an instance dot new folder and you could assign it to the player right what we're gonna do though because we can't use variables is just straight off the bat we have to create the new folder okay we will put it inside of the player and then we have to set its name to be equal to leader stats like so and then we do the same thing with a cache right so we say instance dot new we add the int value right look at that we we aren't able to actually put it inside of this leader stats folder because we don't have a variable for it okay here's how we're going to circumvent this issue okay inside of replicated storage okay what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna add a folder called leader stats okay and then inside of this replicated storage i'm going to add a or not i'm sorry inside of the leader stats i'll add an int value okay i'll call it cache and the value can be zero, okay? So we're gonna have a leader stats folder ready inside of replicated storage. And so from here, okay, let's try this. Let's try cloning this folder and then assigning its parent to be the player all at the same time. And I'll be completely honest, bro, I don't know if this is actually gonna work. Like, honestly, I have no idea. We can clone it, dot parent, and we'll make that equal to the player, which the window guys are going at it. I'm not sure if you can hear, but like, it's really loud. And so let's actually see if this works, okay? So if I add, if I join the game, that actually, that's so cool. Yeah, so in case you never knew, you actually can clone and then set the parent of something all in one line. I'll be honest, I actually wasn't too sure if this would work, but the fact that it does is very interesting. And so now finally that we have the actual cache inside of the player, 
what we'll do is whenever a player clicks the click detector, what we need to do is we need to get this cache, okay? So we need to say um, player, okay, dots, and then we need to get leader stats, like so. And then we need to say dots cache dot value plus equals one, okay? And so now whenever I play the game, and so we find the part and I click on it, there we go. My cash is now increasing. And yeah, so because that actually took quicker than I expected, I want to show you one main thing that you just aren't able to do without using variables. So you know how we're using events here. What we're doing here is we're basically making a connection to this event. So whenever you use connect, what it does is it makes a new RBX script connection. And this RBX script connection is just a value, okay? In the same way that if I were to make a variable, right? Like, I don't know, whatever. I can make it equal to a number right? I could make it equal to a text. I could make it equal to a true or a false, or I could make it equal to the, to, you know, this RBX connection. And the reason this is important is because there's something you can do with connections that you cannot do without using variables. And that is to disconnect the connection. If you run disconnect on a connection, this will disconnect it, right? Meaning that uh, it will no longer actually listen to the mouse click. Like the mouse click will still happen, but it's not going to connect it. Right, meaning the player's cash will never increase. So technically, this is what I'm doing here. But if you create a connection and then disconnect it all at the same line, you're just doing nothing, right? Like if I play the game right now, I and I connect and disconnect all at the same time, it's not going to do anything, right? Yeah, I'm clicking right now. It's not increasing my cash. So disconnects are one of those things which are only helpful after something actually happens because you don't want to connect and disconnect at the same time. That just nils the connection, right? You want the connection to work for a bit, and then when something happens then you disconnect it, right? So the way this works is you say local connection. So you may have to make a variable. And so this is very important. You have to make the variable first and just have it equal to nothing, right? And then you say, you set the variable equal to this connection. So then you say, you know, your variable name is equal to this, right? And it's only after that, then you can actually take this variable and then, you know, call disconnect on it. So what I could do is I could say like, you know, I could increase the value and then I could say if, you know, player <laughs> leader stats, dot cash dot value is equal to five then connection disconnect right like so yeah and so now if i go and actually click the part and my character is looking a little little weirder than usual but if i go click the part one cash two cash three cash four cash five cash and that's it i can keep on clicking however i want but it reached five cash so disconnected the event meaning it's no longer going to be listening for when the click detector has been clicked on. So yeah, variables are very important. Please use them. Uh, quick plug, I have an amazing life-changing course in the pinned comment, so do check that out. And as always, we are back to basics. Thank you for watching.